Hello, Kako. Mike here again for Kiai Conversations, and we have another Kiai today. Trying to join the conversation. You want to introduce yourself? Let everyone know where you're from. What you do. Sure. Um, my name is Malia Sionko. I was born and raised here on Oahu. Grew up in Kaneohe side. I do work as a security officer. So, what made you join this movement? To be honest, it was the Kapuna getting arrested. Prior to that, I wasn't much of an activist mm -hmm. at all. Um, like I was telling you before the camera was on. Growing up, straight out of high school, went joined the military, came home, and it was nothing but boots on the ground, work one job, go to the next, go home, go sleep. That's for most of us. <laughs> Just trying to pay the yeah. bills, yeah? So that was hard. Uh, but once I got to work at one of the private schools here in town, it paid me well enough to where I had more downtime to look at things on social media, connect with family and friends. And one day I just started seeing on my newsfeed the Kapuna getting arrested, one video after the next, from different views. And I was like, why is this happening? And so it made me dig deeper. Um, and I learned that they, the Kapuna have been fighting against you know, people building telescopes on the mana for years. Mm -hmm. And that's when I kind of had to check myself and be like, you need to do your part. So it's, it's kind of what brought me back in. That and the fact that my grandma lived in a time where she wasn't allowed to speak. To them. My mother or her sisters all had English names because of that. My grandma didn't know how to read, right? So in a way, she was silenced. I didn't want that to be me. So I'm here. Right on. And I think that's like a big part of the indoctrination. Um, I shared on our la the, our last video I did previously that my first name is English because my father um, was always scared of us experiencing racism. Yeah. So he put our Hawaiian names in the middle, you know? So that's why I have an English first name. Because um, he himself, growing up, was a, obviously a Hawaiian man with experience racism, racism and that kind of stuff. So the indoctrination just continues, you know. So he kind of passed it on in a way to where, like, you know, we're, we're ignorant in a way of all those things and just now, but now we're rising up, you know. So now we know and we're That's getting educated, thing. right? <laughs> yeah, you know. And it, now we're gonna break that that chain of indoctrination, you know. Hopefully, you know, our Kiki and everyone from now on can, you know, keep this going. So, how would you characterize this movement? Well, if I could just say one word, it would just be mana. Mana. I mean, there is power from the get-go, and it's only getting stronger. Like, at the process, we rise like a mighty wave. Mm -hmm. And even though it's been months since the community getting arrested, people are still showing up. Mm -hmm. And when they can't show up, they're still spreading the word. And I think that helps us. Mm -hmm. um, Recently, my wife and I went on a trip to Bali and she had this brilliant idea to take the Hawaiian flag with us. So everywhere we went, we took it, we held that stuff upside down <laughs> and we were able to start conversations. Like, we went to Indonesia, people didn't know anything about Hawaii other than hula, grass huts and food. <laughs> of course we love to eat, but to be able to start conversations outside of Hawaii and not only in Hawaii. I mean, we can only get bigger. Right. I think that's awesome you guys did that. It's like to help like spread awareness and everything to people outside of Hawaii and other countries. Yeah. You know, they don't even know what's happening. So I think that was, that was a great idea. Um, so, yeah. so what has this movement taught you? It has taught me patience. It has taught me unconditional love. It has taught me not to take what people say at face value. Um, I've been to several different events, seen things outside of events where people can act one way, and the second they're away from the majority of the PIE act a different, or they say something different. So it causes me to research. And in doing so, I have learned that I have to be consistent in, in doing so. So it's taught me more than I realized until just now. <laughs> yeah, good. You know, we're sparking that, that thinking, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is what we want. 
So you did your due diligence, you know, which is very important, I think, too, for us to research, you know, even like TNT, both sides of the issue, like to know what we're fighting and, you know, what people are saying on the other side. So you I think have to be educated to get ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. And you got to know what you're talking about. You exactly. want to make an argument, you know, so hopefully more people think like that, which is what we need. So why do you think this movement is happening? Um, again, mo most people would just say that, you know, because of Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea sparked it. But what do you think is, like, say, people like to say underlying issues behind that that's really giving it momentum, you know? That's really giving it momentum, from my point of view. I mean, again, from my point of view, it all started when the when I got arrested. Mm -hmm. On secret. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. We are here to protect Mauna Kea, but as everybody has seen, more issues are rising up. Not saying that it's never happened before, just more people are speaking out about things. So, I mean, like I said, it's just the beginning. You got stuff going on around the Nalu. When those in Kahuku, unfortunately, they made it through, they're going up. And it wasn't until after, um, the most recent one went up did I realize how close it was mm -hmm. gonna be to like the housing and the schools mm -hmm. to yeah. the kids yeah. mm -hmm. and it's I think in seeing that after effect people are gonna be more cautious about not being on the sidewalk right. if they're gonna second guess themselves mm -hmm. so like I said for me I see this just the beginning mm -hmm. so spreading awareness and everything yeah. is what we need you know and yeah that, that you bring that up seeing I just recently posted one of the pictures I was going around, I think of the window going up um, behind like a school or something yeah. like that. And it was like, like I already kind of had, I, they gave you an idea of how close it's going to be and all that, but you don't realize until you actually see that. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been out, actually out there to see with my own eyes, and I think I'll be even more disgusted by it, you know, mm -hmm. and it could, I feel like the wind turbines could be as clean, 100% clean energy, which I don't believe it is, but you know, if it hypothetically, if it were, I probably still wouldn't want it there as close as they are. You know, because yeah. I feel like that, that can't be right. You know, right behind our, our school. I, I think, think they could have had better placement. Right. I, mean, I get the clean energy, but mm -hmm. there's still different areas they could have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, what does Kapu Aloha mean to you? It means a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be steadfast in love patience and to know who you are and to recognize those feelings that you get in your life. There's strength sometimes in just being present. Mm -hmm. So that's where you have to put it. But, um, no, perfect. Perfect answer. So what do you think is the biggest challenge facing Hawaiian people today? Cost of living. I mean you look right around the corner. There's many Kanaka who are homeless. I mean, I still have family members on the Hawaiian homes list. Never get in a spot. There's thousands of Hawaiians waiting on the Hawaiian homeless. I mean, not too long ago, in fact, just last year we were talking about possibly moving out of Hawaii, away from the U.S., going to another country simply because it's easy to survive there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this is home. We gotta do what we can so that we, our future generation doesn't have to be like right. so many of us have. It's, it's definitely crossed my mind of moving to like the mainland or something like that. But with this movement happening now, I feel like almost feel like they need as many of us yes. here as, as possible too, you know, like people like you and your wife, you know, are fighting for these things, you need the numbers, you need the people that are active and all that kind Definitely. of stuff, you know, so I feel like that makes a big difference, um, but I also understand that people have to be there, you know, yeah. people with families, it's very hard here, um, oh, yeah. bring up Hawaiian homelands, my dad died on this, you know, so he wasn't able to get Hawaiian homelands, and I not enough to get on, you know, only if, yeah, if so he had the land, you know, then I could join the lease yeah. after that because I don't have 50%. So I feel like that's a big thing we should fight for is to lower that blood quantum because yeah. before you know it, there will be no more 50%. Yeah. And I think it's 25% that can take the lease if they already have the land. And 
if you, they already have the land. How long before? Yeah, or if they already have the land. How long before there's no more 25% reserve? Exactly. You know, so, and then what happens to the land after all those 25% reserves are gone? So, I feel like, personally for me, that, that's a big fight that I think we need to kind of get on. Um, that worries me too, because my mom, like I said, like a lot of my family, have been waiting for this. Mm -hmm. And she's always talked about wanting to own her own home. Mm -hmm. And she's not getting any younger. You wouldn't know she's getting any older though. She <laughs> yeah, still goes right and goes. But it, it's a fear of mine because you know, your parents raise you. You wanna when you get older you wanna give back or help in any way you can. And here it's so hard. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're just praying for that list, for that yeah. name to be up on your list. But even then though, I, I feel I still feel like we need something better because a 99 year lease, like shouldn't be 99 years, you know, you should be able to have that event. I think that just happened where the first lease went up, right? Like someone that had it for 99 years. I think oh, recently. I, I don't know what the outcome was. I could be wrong. I don't know, but I think I, I felt like I heard something like that. But again, yeah, we it yeah, it's a big thing. We need, we definitely need our land. Um, so do you think the government cares about the Hawaiian people? I think they think they do. <laughs> I I think it's all about greed, mm -hmm. really. I don't think they care about us. Yes. I'm gonna leave it at that. You know, of course, and I think that most people would agree. It is because of greed and the money and all that kind of stuff. Um, if there is any one issue that you could solve immediately, what would it be? Housing. Housing. For the Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Most of us have to work multiple jobs just to own a studio. I mean, we got lucky with a one bedroom apartment mm -hmm. at a decent rate. And I know I've got a couple of friends who's constantly bouncing around because they can't afford a $950 uh, rental agreement. Which is actually on the cheap side. Exactly. Yeah. And they're having a hard time with that, right? Yeah. And so, every once in a while, I'll head into work. I see one of my high school friends who's been misplaced. You want to come over to my house? And, you know, it's that pride. And they're like, no, like you, it just breaks you down when you see people you know, people you know who are Hawaiian but may not know face to face. Just knowing our people are getting pushed out of homes for condos like this, mm -hmm. apartments. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. So <laughs> Papa Loha is yeah, yeah, very yeah. tested. Right. <laughs> what do you think is the most misunderstood or most mischaracterized part of the movie? So like someone that's close to me or on the other side of the fence, what do you think? I think the Kanaka and the Kiai are just uneducated and we don't know what we're doing. It's not strategic. But I've learned to observe what the Kuna are teaching. It may not seem strategic in that moment, but different events down the line and you look back like the university, Ooh. Uh, you have different teachers up there. It's starting to trickle down, even here to Oahu. Hunana uh, Niho started holding classes. And Kuhuku started rising up when the wind turbines started their project. And you also have Lana Kila traveling all over doing his. Oh my gosh, his workshops are amazing. Kind of you have to go to one. I know, yeah. It's been, so I haven't been able to make it, but I, one of these days, hopefully I can. Him and Havana, actually. She ended up coming to one of the Hunano Niho workshops. Yeah. Workshop. yeah. I want to check out. I think Hunano Niho is, you said they're slowing down too, though, but uh, yeah, so. Yeah. That would probably be the best bet. But I'm sure Lana Kila is still making his rounds. I know he's still doing it, so <laughs> yeah. I'll catch him one of these days. We'll see you there. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say to someone who doesn't agree with the movement or is on the fence about it? I would say come to an event. And whether or not you oppose it, just come. Be still. Be silent. Observe. And then tell me you don't feel anything. And leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Right on. So as a Kiai, what do you think is the best way that someone can contribute to the movement? To be present. And when you can't be present, share the information so those who may not have access to everything all the time 
think I'm going to be present in your spot. I mean, like you said, you need the numbers. It's beautiful that other countries are uniting and standing behind us and with us, even on the Honor Care. But we need the numbers to stay. Right. And I, I, I think it is, and I think it's just it's still spreading to this day. Oh, like yeah. more people are getting aware of everything. So but we're definitely on the right track. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna ask you: Is there a question you'd want to see me ask someone like the next interview in the future that I haven't already asked? What do you want your legacy to be? Twenty years down the line, ten, however long, with your children. Grandchildren, even your ancestors, will they be proud mm. of where you stand and your action or inaction? Will that cause them pain or the make them proud? Right on. That's a good, a good question to ask somebody. Anything you want to say to everyone watching? To all our rules? I did. We out. Okay, that's it, guys. So thanks for watching. Again, subscribe to the YouTube. We don't miss future episodes. Um, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Mahalo. Aloha.